Okie dokie. In this problem, we are given a function with multiple terms, and the goal is to identify what the derivative of this function is. Some little shortcut to recognize off the start is that we have three terms being added together, which means as long as the derivative of one of these terms doesn't go to zero, then we should have three terms in our derivative as opposed to two terms or even one big term. And so just with that in mind, we can eliminate a lot of options just right off the start, you know. So let's jump into it. So the idea is to find the derivative of each of these three terms and then just kind of keep them together with whatever the operation is, whether that's addition or it might change to subtraction based on what the derivatives are. So let's jump into the first derivative of this first term, negative 11e to the x to the fourth. So using a little bit of chain rule here, the negative 11 is the coefficient. So that'll always stay in the derivative. It'll always carry through. e to the something, or e to the x, has a derivative of e to that something, or e to the x. And so that e term, any e term, when you take the derivative, will always, always stay the same. But then, using chain rule, we still have to multiply what we have by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is 4x cubed, because our inside was x to the fourth. So this is our derivative of the whole first term. Now, let's go to 2 ln of x. We have 2 ln of x. Again, the 2 is the coefficient, so that stays on the outside. It carries through. Then, the main question is, what's the derivative of ln of x? Again, remembering our derivatives is very important from previous quizzes. So, ln of x has a derivative of 1 over x. And then, do a different color for the last one. So, we have 11 cosine of 5x. So, again, it was separated by addition, so we keep the addition. And then, we keep the 11, because that was the coefficient, and then cosine of something has a derivative of negative sine of something. So I'm going to write this actually down here just to save us some room. So again, we keep the 11, and then cosine goes to negative sine of 5x. So we keep the inside argument, the 5x, the same when we take the derivative of the outside cosine. So this is what we have so far. We've only taken the derivative of the outside layer, though, the cosine. We still need to take the derivative of the 5x, the inside layer. 5x has a derivative of just 5. So we have our three pieces. So what we want to do first maybe is go ahead and rewrite these with multiplying any like terms that we can. So negative 11 times 4 would be negative 44. We can leave the x cubed in the mix, and then we can leave e x to the fourth in the mix. So all these terms have been accounted for here. For the second term, we have a positive 2 times 1 over x. When we multiply those, the 2 can just multiply up to the 1, and so we have 2 over x. For the last term, we have 11 times 5, and there's a negative in the mix, so I'll call it negative 55 when we multiply them all, and then sine of 5x. So let's think about something real quick. What's a big thing that sets C and D apart? Well, there's a few things, but I would think we could have just found the derivative of one of these terms to have found our answer. So once we eliminated a and b, the only answer that has positive 2 over x is d. And then, of course, we could confirm that the other terms match up with the signs and everything, uh, like positive and negative, not these signs. Um, but regardless, everything matches up, so d is our answer. But again, what I'm stressing is, even if you don't have all the derivatives fully down yet, or you can't reason with why every answer is what it is, go with what you know to be definitely true. If you were able to find this 2 over x, then trust that. You know, if you feel confident, confident with that derivative, then you know that 
D is definitely our answer instead of C, right? So let's go ahead and do one more. I'll do it a little bit faster in this case. So the first term, we have negative five. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write these kind of vertically just because I didn't give myself space. So W prime would be equal to negative five. Again, ln of something has a derivative of one over something. So we leave that something the same, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Again, this is all chain rule material, multiplying by derivatives of different layers, uh, of you know, for functions of different layers. And so if you need to review chain rule, I might recommend going back to the, I think it was the last quiz, um, or even watching other videos on YouTube could definitely be helpful. So this is the first term. And then the second term will be minus two. We keep the coefficient e to the something stays exactly the same. But we do have to multiply by the derivative of the inside layer, which is 7x. So the inside layer is 7x, its derivative is 7. And then the third term, plus 2x, we keep the plus 2, or sorry, plus 2 sine of x. Uh, we keep the plus 2, sine of x goes to cosine of x, and we are done. They most likely have multiplied negative 5 and 6 to get negative 30. So do we see a negative 30 in one of the terms? We see a 30 here, but this term is not negative. The only other 30 we see is this, and it does have a negative in front. So just based on that term, A is our answer. Let's make sense of the other terms, though. So we have an x to the 6th on the bottom times an x to the 5 on top x to the fifth divided by x to the sixth leaves us with one x on the bottom. Five x is on top, six on the bottom. When we cancel five on top and bottom, we're left with one on the bottom. All right, second term, we have negative two times a seven, so negative 14 e to the seven x. And then the last term, plus two cosine of x. So another big thing, let's say we didn't take the derivative of any of these trickier terms and we just knew that the derivative of sine was cosine, positive cosine. This is the only one with positive two, co or really just with cosine, period. And so, you know, little things like that can go a long way as long as you trust your derivative skills with some of the more just kind of like basic memorized derivatives as opposed to some of the chain rule derivatives that these require, right? So use what you know as best you can. I know it's a lot otherwise. Um, but I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know.